Algebra 2 Cram, New York State Algebra 2 Regions, Common Core, Basics, Trigonometric Functions, Concept Number 6, Standard Position, and Secant. The odds of someone doing exactly what you tell them to do is pretty slim, but I guarantee that if you cram with me, you'll become an Algebra 2 master. What we're doing here is so effective. I'm coaching you to turn your wants and desires of uh, an A or a perfect test score into a new paradigm. I want to include everyone who needs a boost in Algebra 2. If I could stick every math student with a syringe containing a healthy dose of eye-open awareness of their inner mathematical genius, I most likely would, okay? <laughs> I know that seems a little nutty, um, but if you want your healthy dose, inbox me at memedicine at gmail.com to order this complete cram session. You have lots of peers, friends, classmates, or colleagues who could really benefit from this cram session as well. So tell them to inbox me at memedicine at gmail.com so that they too can order the Algebra 2 cram session. You'll be glad you spread the word because they'll make great study buddies. The concept of cramming often has negative connotations, but what people are actually thinking of is hurrying, which is a result of fear and can consequently be destructive. We're not hurrying, we're cramming, there's a difference. Hurrying is jam-packing tons and tons of unorganized information into your mental, spiritual DNA over a very tiny amount of elapsed time, whereas cramming is taking quantum leaps in your understanding in an organized way in what seems like an instant. All right, so let's delve into the concept of standard position and the secant of an angle. Standard position and trigonometric functions. When an angle theta is in standard position, the secant function is defined as, so how would you define the secant of this angle theta? Definitely press pause if you need to. All right, so if you order the entire cram session and you watch the first part to this series, you would have known what standard position is, but if you didn't, it's okay. I won't hold it against you. Let's do a quick overview of standard position, okay? An angle theta is said to be in standard position when its vertex is located at the origin, here at zero on our Cartesian coordinate plane. Okay, the initial side ray is located on the positive x-axis, and the terminal side ray is located within quadrant 1, making this an acute angle. And an acute angle is an angle that is positioned between the quadrantal angles 0 degrees and 90 degrees, okay? And just in case you forgot what a quadrantal angle is, it's basically an angle with its um, terminal side ray on either the x-axis or the any of the y-axis. It can be the y-axis in the positive or negative direction, or it can be the x-axis in the positive or negative direction. Here, the negative quadrantal angle direction points towards 180 degrees, okay? What well, doesn't point toward 180 degrees? 180 degrees terminates on the negative x in our Cartesian coordinate plane. Okay, moving right along. So we established the initial side ray and the terminal side ray. And we're going to call our terminal side ray R for short, okay? So ray is now becoming R because we're too lazy to say ray. Actually, no, I'm just kidding, but you're going to see why in a moment. And let's say that we arbitrarily choose a point along our terminal side ray R. We're going to call that point P. And P has coordinates X and Y, okay, if P is exactly right here. All right. 
So what we can do is now illustrate the extent or the coordinates of point P. Point P goes in the horizontal extent of the X coordinate X and it rises up to the um, Y coordinate level of Y. Okay, so by discussing the X coordinate and Y coordinate, we can basically resolve our new line segment R, which is cut off by point P, um, we can resolve it into its X and Y axis. And this is really cool because this is going to simplify finding all trigonometric values, okay? And in order, like what I'm talking about is this. When you resolve this line segment and it's into its X and Y coordinate, what you end up with is the right triangle formation. Let's, let's indicate that so we can have a little bit more clarity. All right, so here goes our right triangle. And one more point that I want to point out to you. Although I told you that this is the X coordinate here and the Y coordinate here, you have to note that the X coordinates are going to be positive in quadrant one, in quadrant two, and negative in quadrant, I mean quadrant four, and negative in quadrants two and three, okay? And you can say the same for the Y coordinates. They're going to be positive in quadrants one and quadrant two, but negative in quadrants three and quadrants four, okay? Alrighty then, now moving right along, our coordinates can have different signs, but ray, ray here is going to basically always be positive, and it's for this reason. R is going to be, or you know, R is representative of ray for short, um, is going to be our hypotenuse. And we're actually considering the distance or the measurement of the hypotenuse. We're not considering the direction where we do with the coordinates. So because R is the result of taking the square root of the X coordinate of P squared plus the Y coordinate of Y squared, it doesn't matter whether or not Y is negative or positive or X is negative, positive, or both negative, both positive, because when terms are squared, this makes the sign on the term irrelevant, okay? All right, so that's that. So based upon all this information I just shoved into your mind and your mental image center, the um, secant of our angle theta is basically going to be defined as the hypotenuse divided by the adjacent side or the x-coordinate, okay? Or you can say basically it's um, going to be one or the reciprocal of, well, it's basically one over the cosine of theta, or you can just say the reciprocal of the cosine of theta anytime you take a number and flip it, because every number has an implicit one. That's the reciprocal of that number, okay? So every um, rational number can be expressed as a fraction written over one. That's why one over the cosine of theta is just the reciprocal of um, <laughs> the original way you would say cosine of theta. But we also recall from um, the second cram session in this series that the cosine of theta is equal to x or the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse or our ray segment, r segment, not ray segment, sorry. All right. And basically, when you divide um, a numerator by a denominator, you, be, you multiply the numerator by the reciprocal of the denominator. So let me show you what I'm talking about. One is our numerator, and we're basically going to multiply it by the reciprocal or the flip fraction of the cosine of theta. And when we do that, we end up with r over x. All right. 
So this is our answer. I know it took us a long ways to get there, but um, thanks for sticking with it. And as you can see, intellectual comprehension of this material is not difficult at all. And once you order the entire complete cram session, you'll be able to answer a battery of um, Algebra True questions. So inbox me at memedicine at gmail.com to order this complete cram session. I know you're going to do well.